Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. Welcome to another episode of Reviewing Supermarket Teas. For those of you who have not seen previous episodes, let me give you the lowdown. I blind taste three teas that I know nothing about, all purchased from one supermarket. I try to work out what the tea is, I give you my thoughts about the tea, I try to give you an idea of what I expect the price point to be on the tea, and then I score the tea from zero to 10. From poison to pinnacle tea, it's worth noting that a score of 10 means that the tea is worthy to be called a Mayleaf tea. For those of you who don't know, Mayleaf curates tea. So we taste hundreds and hundreds of teas every year from China, Japan, Taiwan, and beyond. And we select the absolute pinnacle teas to bring into our Mayleaf collection. It would be very, very unfair for us to expect supermarkets to stock this echelon of tea because they're much more specialist, much more craft artisan. They're produced in much smaller batches and command a much higher price. Supermarket buyers need to be very, very conscious of price and volume. They need to know that they can purchase a lot of it. So their buying parameters for a supermarket are very different to Mayleaf. However, any score above a five, I think is a good score for a supermarket. Five to seven is good if we get a tea which scores above an eight, then I will mention the brand name of that tea. Otherwise, I'm not gonna mention any brand names because I don't wanna be seen to be critical of any particular brand. So bear in mind that scoring system, it's very unlikely that we're gonna have scores over seven or eight, but I am always hopeful. Today's supermarket is Match in Luxembourg, and these teas were kindly sent to us by Tom Weber. Tom Weber, we've conversed online before. I know he is a tea head aficionado. I know he buys Mayleaf teas, so I know he knows the good stuff, and therefore I'm hopeful to get some treats in here. He has to select a representative range from Match, but I always say try to select teas that are more on the top echelon of the range that they supply. So I'm hopeful that we're gonna get some good teas here and we're gonna get some high scores. Whenever a tea supermarket package arrives to us, I do not open it, I give it to Celine. She will take out all the information. So I know nothing about these teas. Tom has kindly already given all the information in sealed envelopes. So Celine's job is a little bit easier. So we're gonna be revealing the teas only after I've given a score. Right, are you ready? Let's go. We've got the guru here. We've got a little buffalo here. Let's go with tea number one. Tea number one, Tom. Tom, what are you doing to me, Tom? I just bigged you up, okay? Tea head aficionado. And you're giving me a scented tea from the beginning. That is not usually my bag. This smells like an Earl Grey black tea. It smells actually not bad for an Earl Grey. It smells like a, a fairly decently produced Earl Grey. I've got about four grams here. I've got 85 degree water, so I'm gonna use that to heat up this pot and then I'm just gonna whack this up to about 95. So let that heat up. I hope that further down here, we're gonna get some better whole leaf tea, unless Match doesn't supply that. But let's live in hope. Okay, leaf goes in. Let's give this a schnifter. Mmm, shouldn't shake it, clearly. Lovely. CTC, very, very powdery. This is almost a tea bag cut tea. Not something that makes for a very pretty tea session. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, smells a bit minty as well, which is weird. It's like a mint Earl Grey. It's definitely more Earl Grey than mint, but definitely mintiness in there. It smells like toothpaste. Yeah, it's okay. Bergamot, essential oil. So it's got that citrus note, citrus skin note, black tea. It's got a Classic, I'm gonna guess 
Assam. Right, we're not gonna fill this pot up. We're gonna only go about halfway and I'm gonna rinse all this dust off here. We're gonna intentionally oversteep slightly. I'm not gonna rinse this because if it's a scented tea, then it's not really fair to rinse it because most of the aroma is gonna dissipate in the, in the rinse. I've got a little yuzumashi here. Normally used to cool down water, but I like to use it as a gong dao bei. Color of the liquor, a little bit cloudy as you'd expect from this fine cut. Already the aroma is dissipating, but it smells brisk, a little bit of concrete. So it really reminds me of a builder's brew in terms of the aroma. And what I mean by that in the UK, tea, British builder's brew tea means very strong black tea. And somehow I associate that smell even with construction sites. So when I smell this, I'm smelling the smell of, of, of stone and concrete. You know, when you walk into a building site, a little bit of pine wood, definitely actually quite a lot of pine wood. Not a bad smell, I have to say, quite, Enjoyable, certainly not like those fake aroma smells. This smells at least like it's real essential oil and not artificial. Who knows, this might be the best Earl Grey I've ever had. Let's see. No, it's not. Um, in fact, the aroma is relatively gentle on it. It's not overpowering in terms of the bergamot. I'm assuming it's an Earl Grey. A lot of the aroma is still in the leaf, but very little in the taste. What has happened? Hot water has hit leaf. All those volatile aromatics have gone poof and just sort of escaped into the air. And so the liquor is left a little bit wanting. And so now we're revealing the quality of the tea. And I would say it's a very standard taste I'm getting bergamot I'm getting wood again pencil shavings which is kind of classic for these kind of broken broken leaf teas I prefer the smell in the pot the smell in the pot definitely has aromatics more aromatics you know what I'm gonna do I'm intentionally gonna allow this, I'm not gonna heat this up. So now it's 90 degrees. I'm gonna see if I can hold some of those aromatics a little bit just by doing shorter brewing times. I'm gonna go straight in. Shorter brewing times and slightly cooler. If you've not seen our master classes on brewing, then it's worth checking that out if you wanna get into the geek zone of how to control different parameters um, in taste by tweaking the parameters in brewing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit more of the bergamot is in there. You know what, it's fine, it's nothing bad, Tom, I get you. You know, this is probably their sort of representative medium to probably even higher because it's out of tea bag, Earl Grey. I certainly wouldn't purchase it. Uh, I don't think it's got a strong enough um, or deep enough tea flavor. I don't think that the quality of the tea is good enough. The smell and the aroma of the bergamot is decent. There is still a slight mint in there, which is a bit odd to me. So normally I, I don't know if they've done a blend or something, but it's, it seems a little, bit, a little bit strange that they would mix that in there. Price point on this, three cents a gram two, three cents a gram, you know, your standard cut crushed hair curl leaf from, I'm gonna guess, Sri Lanka, India, Assam variety. Right, let's review, oh, score, score, let's look at the scoring system. Mm. It's a, uh, is it, it's always that, is it, is it good enough to be a four out of 10? It's definitely, you can call it tea, it's definitely a three. Is it worthy of a meh? I would say it 
It is. I would say it's a 4.1. 4.1, just over the mark, just into meh territory. Let's see what the info is. Oh, nice one. Yep, there we go. He's tried to do the whole thing and giving me everything. So we've got black tea, Earl Grey, season unknown, cultivar unknown, origin unknown, picking and processing unknown, elevation unknown. So we can't confirm where it comes from, which is a shame. Price point is four cents a gram, a little bit steep, but there or thereabouts sort of standard price. Let's see what Tom has in store for me. Oh, Tom, you, you giving me a double center? Two center teas? Is this what match is all about? Is it center tea territory? So now I'm getting mint green tea and now I understand why that black tea had a minty note to it because it was probably picking up some of this. So problem with scented tea as if you needed another one is it will tend to impact the flavor of all your other teas. This is a green tea. This is a nondescript green tea. Let's take a look at the leaf itself here. Um, lighter green colors, darker colors. This is a sort of mixed bag of teas here. Obviously a lot of broken leaf here. It looks like it could be anything like a Vietnamese green tea. A lot of Vietnamese green tea looks similar to this, but it could certainly be a Chinese green tea. Thai, Viet no, Vietnam or China, more likely China, I guess, but it doesn't look particularly high quality and it smells of mint. And again, the mint, to give it all its due, the mint smells like it's real in terms of its uh, origin, it doesn't, smell like fake mint, which would be next level if they faked their mint. Which is why if, you're if you are gonna purchase a scented tea, then purchase a scented tea that you know it's possible that they could have scented it with um, a natural product. So zest of any fruit, so orange, lemon, lime, that's all possible because you can get those essential oils easily, but you can't get the essential oil of a strawberry so, you know, it's in order for them to be scenting it with strawberry flavor, for example, it's very, very unlikely that you can do that with dry product. You'd have to spray it with, therefore, an artificial fragrance. Okay, in it goes, this mint green. Yeah, lots and lots of mint. It's fine. Who doesn't like the smell of mint? Most people would not have a problem with that. We're at 85 degrees here. Good enough. Uh, again, not gonna rinse it, simply because I don't wanna lose too much of that aroma, which is part of the design of this tea. I think that that's gonna be good enough. This looks very broken and I don't want it to go too orange already. It's the color of that liquor is very pond water like, isn't it? I'm getting a sort of nutty muddiness. Smell is very, very strong on the lid of mint. Liquor color, bit cloudy. Uh, thank you, Tom. Here we go. Yep, 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 yep. Low quality green tea. Nothing in there that makes me um, want to really dig down into the flavor of that green tea. It just tastes a bit sour and oxidized. Slight sweetness, but I think that that's more from the mint. So I'm left with a minty freshness in the mouth like I've just brushed my teeth, which is nice. Um, Taste of the tea is very hard to pick up. Slight floral note maybe in the tea, a certain sweetness in the tea, but mostly it's a very weak 
flavored green tea, not much going on. I'm gonna now brew it much stronger with a very small amount of water so that I can assess this tea. Because in the mouth, it's very difficult for me to assess the actual quality of the leaf, which basically means it's low quality because I can't taste anything. A little bit of creaminess that I keep sort of picking up. A little bit of creaminess. Sorry that I poured it all away. I know I should be appreciating every last drop, but you better pray for me now. That's a strong one. That is a strong tea. Looks now much more orange in color. Okay, so nice strong brew of this green mint tea. Even now, I'm getting a lot of astringency, I'm getting a lot of dryness and puckering. Tastes old, tastes oxidized, tastes pretty bad. The mint is the only saving grace. What are we saying about this tea? Well, I'm gonna guess it's a either Chinese or Vietnamese green tea, uh, obviously mint centered and the uh, price point shouldn't be anywhere above a th two, three cents a gram, I would say three cents a gram, something like that. Um, so again, uh, really, really cheap tea. Score, you know, this definitely doesn't get into meh. This is, I would say, a three, three. You can call it tea, but only just. And it's really not got much flavor. at all. So let's see what it is. Tom, I hope you're building up Tom to like the big finale where you're going to hit me with an amazing poor tea or something. You better. Oh yeah. Okay. So Chun Mi, the cheapest generally teas out there, green tea with Moroccan spearmint, Season unknown, cultivar unknown, origin will definitely be from China. Uh, picking and processing, well, it's gonna be your standard uh, commodity, green tea, chopped up and machine processed, elevation unknown. Price point, four cents per gram, a little bit pricey, in my opinion, for this. Come on, Tom, come on, Tom. You've left it to number three. That's what you should do. Leave it to number three, the best for last. Here we go. Ah, okay. Tom, that is real tea. At least it looks like good tea. At least it looks like pure whole leaf. At least it looks like it's got some fur and some white on those buds. It's a green tea. Um, the picking, all right, is slightly rougher. It's more lower leaf, but I don't hold that against teas because sometimes the larger leaves can have very, very good flavor. Okay, give a fresh pot, a hit of hot water. We're gonna brew this at about 80 degrees. Celsius, I should say, which is 175 Fahrenheit. Now I can shake it. See, nothing's sticking to the rim. Okay, yeah. It's a joy just to be able to smell tea rather than all of the fragrance. I'm not saying it's a particularly in lovely smell. I'm smelling a little bit of swimming pool. <laughs> Um, but there is um, a little funk to it, pleasant funk to it, a little bit of the old sweaty skin, a little bit, dare I say, sweaty feet, but clean, just fresh socks off, a little bit of that going on in here, which 
is not altogether unpleasant, but not particularly joyous, especially for a green tea. Smells a little bit more poor in its, uh, raw poor in its funkiness. But I'm pretty sure it's not a poor. The leaves would be much larger and the smell would be much funkier. But, but it has definitely been oxidized similar to a pua, as in the kill green process, the shaching process to freeze the tea in um, its state of relative low oxidation was not done particularly, let's say, detailed. And so therefore the tea seems to have been allowed to oxidize a bit more. It's got a slightly sour note, the, west, the wet leaf, not particularly loving that sour note. Um, again, I'm getting a little touch of that swimming pool. What I mean by that, a tiny bit of detergent note going on. Slight stewed vegetative note in it. Better than the previous two. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to be filling this pot up again. I want to get a nice strong brew from this. Leave it a little while just to do its thing. Larger leaves going to require a little bit more uh, brewing than those broken leaves, of course. Yeah, that's been cleaned. Okay. You can see the color is a lot lighter than that orange pond water color that we had before. Still not very bright. It doesn't have sort of bright glistening quality. Let's see what it looks like in the cup. Not bad though, not bad. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Yeah, you know what? All right, it's got some texture to it as well. I can see some of those um, Bud hairs uh, have come off and that's gonna provide some extra texture to this tea. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Fully, finally. Not bad. Not bad. Maybe it's just because I'm used to, <laughs> I'm now accustomed to drinking the scented stuff. Texture, thin. <clears throat> dry. Definitely, if this was younger pickings, I think it would be too dry. So I think it's a good thing that they picked some of those larger leaves. Mm. The imagery that I have is um, orange and orange and lemon washing up liquid. But I don't mean it's very detergent, but it has that sort of soapy quality to it. Texture is dry though. Texture is very dry. Uh, it's getting worse. Okay, let me try and brew it again. Second infusions. Wow, this is making my, my, my whole mouth sort of, my whole throat close up. It's very, very dry. The texture is, whoa, very dry. Okay, but let's think about taste, which is why again, I've over brewed it intentionally just so that I can get the full taste of this. Hmm, aroma's not bad. I'm getting like, um, um, I don't know what they are. They're, they're, they're not edible, but there are these white uh, berries that grow in the UK that are sort of like, you can pick them, they're, they're not edible. And when you throw them on the floor, they make a little splatting sound. Very childhood memory of mine. These little sort of, they pop basically, these little white berries, they pop. Uh, I don't know, if you guys know what I'm talking about, I'm rambling a little bit, but there's a certain smell to this that reminds me of that fruit. The flavor is dissipating. I'm picking up a slight bit of mint, but I think that that's from the mint green tea. 
um, very dry, not particularly amazing, certainly not worthy of a specialist tea store, but out of all the teas that I've been given today, that one at least has some flavor to it. Vegetal, slight citrus, and a little bit soapy. Price point on this is gonna be more expensive than the other, six, seven cents, maybe even, yeah, seven cents per gram, something like that. Um, this is um, a green tea. It might be marketed as a Malfung green tea, Chinese Malfung green tea, that's what it might be marketed as. Score, definitely you can call it tea. It's above a meh, worth reinfusing. Ooh, ooh. Is it gonna hit five? Let's do it. I'm giving that a five, one, 5.1. So match just gets into the fives. 5.1. Let's see what this is. Oh, T number three. Here we go. What have we got? Aha, okay. So it is Vietnamese. So this is a Vietnamese green tea. Yeah, could have, should have worked that one out. Organic Shan Green. This is from Vietnam. This is elevation 900 meters, so relatively high altitude. Price, seven cents per gram. There you go. Vietnam produces cheaper teas of this style. So match final scores from the threes to the fours, just sneaking into the fives. Definitely worth upping your game. That's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas no matter where you are in the world by browsing our website or visit our tea house if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.